I'm Allison Singer from the Autism Science Foundation here today with Dr. Jill Locke, who is one of the Autism Science Foundation's 2011 postdoctoral grantees. She's working with Dr. David Mandel at the University of Pennsylvania on an incredibly exciting project, one that our entire board and SAB is really excited about. It's called Improving the Social Involvement of Children with ASD in Schools. Thanks so much for joining us today, Dr. Locke. Thank you for having me. So tell me a little bit about what we know and what we need to learn about social involvement of our children in school settings. Yeah, so what's really interesting is that there's this movement for inclusion and a lot of our kids with autism are being included but not so much in that social setting. So they are in the classroom, so what does inclusion really mean? And so what we're hoping to do is make these kids more included in their social networks, have more friends, become more involved in the social dynamics. Um, of school and so a lot of the research that we've done in the past has to do with looking at these kids in laboratory settings and now we're moving into the school settings where the kids are in their natural environments where we can see them interacting during in the classroom or on the playground with peers um, that are typically developing and we want to see how they are included in those types of settings and so the movement now is to sort of help these kids build um, these social skills where they can be successful at school with their same age peers. One of the issues that we've seen in the past with de these types of interventions where we test them in a lab and then try to move them into a school is that in a lab you're dealing with a highly trained, skilled clinician who's ad administering the therapy and then in schools you're dealing with special education teachers or general education teachers or classroom aides or paraprofessionals who don't have that level of training. So how will you address that issue? So we're hoping what we from what learn to learn from what we've done in the past. And so in our first trial of an intervention that we did in school um, systems in Los Angeles during my graduate training, we worked with kids that were on the spectrum one-on-one -on -one or alone or in combination with um, three or three other typically developing classmates. So um, an interventionist would go out and work one-on-one -on -one with a target child with autism and another one would go out and work with three of the typically developing peers and we randomized um, the conditions and we tested to see if those treatments worked alone or in combination with one another. And what we found were these gains for kids that were randomized to the peer mediated treatment conditions. They um, were more included in their social network networks of their classroom. They spent less time on the playground solitary, which means that they spent less time walking around alone or walking um, the periphery of the grass. Um, and more time engaged with peers either in conversation or games or mutual activity. And so after three months, once our expert clinician team left, our research team left, those gains kind of dipped a little bit. Um, they weren't statistically significant, but you can kind of see the trend was going down. And if we followed up the kids, and we, we weren't able to, but if we followed them up into next year, I would bet that those gains would be lost. And so this new idea is for sustainability and generalization. So we want these skills with these kids to maintain these skills throughout the school year and into the next school year and beyond. So the idea is to instead of using these expert clinicians, training the school staff and school personnel, ideally the children's paraprofessionals or aides since they're with the children um, throughout the school day during social times like recess and lunch that they can continue to provide these social opportunities for these kids and build engagement and facilitate these opportunities for the kids to interact with their peers naturally during the school day. One thing that I think is so exciting about this type of work for parents is that this seems like a very cost-effective way to get this sustained efficacious treatment to many, many more children right. in that you're not relying on a skilled clinician, you're working with, you're training the people who are actually there. Can you talk a little bit about, about right. that? Right. So if this study is successful, we're hoping that schools across the nation will be able to adopt this model. It's very cost effective and it should be easily implemented once the school staff is trained. So um, it's this built-in mechanism for the schools to continue to provide these opportunities for the kids. If these aides or paraprofessionals are trained, they're with the kids every day, they'll be able to practice every day throughout the school year, and sometimes they'll follow the kids into the next school year. So it's just a, a one snapshot time of when we can train them and that those skills will last 
for a while until we need to tweak it for developmentally appropriate um, behaviors when they come into middle school, which is an, another ball game. Um, but it, it'll be a great way for schools to, to adopt, and it's very cost effective. And I'm very blessed to be in Philadelphia, where I'm in a lot of under-resourced schools, and they're very welcoming to, to having us come in and train their school personnel. So it's a great environment to kind of test this, this idea. And have you found a good level of receptivity from the personnel? In Absolutely. The um, the school district is very excited um, with all the budget cuts. It's nice to have this expert team come in and train their personnel. Um, but I feel like the schools are very hungry for something, especially in Philadelphia where the kids, they don't have as many quality evidence-based programs that are available to them um, for, for free. So it'll be very exciting. So we are here at IMFAR, and I know you've spent the last couple of days attending meetings and talking to scientists. What has been your favorite part of being at IMFAR? Well, it's very exciting for me to see all this intervention research going on, especially this translational research from research to practice. And I feel like the movement is towards dissemination now. So we, we know of some promising evidence-based treatments, and now it's about this push to disseminate them into the communities. And I find that I just left a symposium that was from research to practice. And it was really interesting to see that there are people out there that share the same visions that I do of, of sharing what we know to communities that often don't have those resources or, or, or don't have that information available to them. So it's nice to see that NFAR is recognizing that as well. Well, we are really looking forward to seeing the outcome of this study. I think it has potential to really change the lives of so many children and really help them gain skills in the place where they spend most of their day. So thank you so much for being here and work hard and we can't wait to see the outcome of your study. Thank you so much.